Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Talking Sam. I'm your host, Sam Macias, and with me today is one of the most talented, up-and-coming, freelance storyboard artists in the world of animation today. <laughs> she is the one and on only Cynthia Michelle Davila Chase. Cynthia, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me here. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, how how are you doing today so far? Everything good? Yeah, I'm doing good. I um I woke up a little little tired this morning, but that's that's okay. I'm on my vacation now it's mm. for for the week. Okay. Um, so I'm like ready to rest. <laughs> this is like my <laughs> first day, and I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice. All right. How's the uh kind of the anima uh, animation game been for you so far? Um, before yeah, before we. Game, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh well, like we were just talking about earlier, um, you know, the animation industry is kind of a bit of a bust right now. It's yeah. kinda hard. Um, you know, with uh none of the studios are hiring are or green lighting new shows and like uh there there's no jobs available. So yeah, the, the there's like a big hiring freeze still. I've seen a couple here and there, but um they've been very spread out and it's like one every however many months and i'm like and some of them aren't even like my it's my style like you'll see some of them like are like are action shows the ones that are that are looking for work mm -hmm. and yeah it's just been it's been hard like i'm 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 working minimum wage right now which is like what a lot of us are actually doing right now just to pay the bills okay. um but yeah uh, there's there's rumors that hopefully next year it'll it'll really kick up again maybe at the end of this year maybe we'll see um but yeah that's that's kind of where things are at i'm just kind of like chilling working on my own stuff and trying not to be super miserable about how things are right now. <laughs> uh so yeah it's uh it's rough but like i'm 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 coping like i think i'm coping well you know kind of thing Hey, you keep that po positive mindset and then you can't ask for more and you're keeping doing it well so far from the looks of it um before yeah. <laughs> we before we get into all of your work that you've done so far up until now, I want to talk to you real quick about how you began your artistic journey. Where where did it start? Did you have a certain uh, muse that you were a fan of as a kid? Did you read a certain comic, watch a certain show? Please tell us. Yeah, so um, I actually started drawing when I was like out of the womb. <laughs> <laughs> like I had like I swear like I was born with like a pencil in my hand like I've been drawing since I was like really really young uh I would just draw like a lot of stick figures of like people that I knew and stuff um eventually as I grew more um I started getting more into shows or video games and, and comics I drew a lot of like Kirby comics and I drew a lot of Sonic as a kid like <laughs> mm -hmm. I had a few video game muses um and uh, yeah, that's kind of where it all started. And then like, eventually, like, I think when I hit middle school or like early high school, I was like, oh, I kind of want to do this as like a career. And then I found out what storyboarding was uh, when I was like, I think like 16 or something like that. And I was like, oh, I really want to do this because I was really into comics and, mm -hmm. uh, and animation, but like combining them. And uh, storyboarding is about a lot of, uh, a lot of acting and staging and, uh, uh, perspective and working the camera you're like a cameraman basically I was like really into that um and yeah so then I, I finally went to school for that and that's kind of how the whole thing like went along okay all right nice now was there any specific uh, artist that you remember growing up that you were a big admirer of the most or was it just um kind of just you watch a show saw that style and you just uh, attach yourself to it it was a little bit of both um when I was, I think that my first inspiration was honestly because uh, City Universe, Rebecca Sugar. Mm, okay. Um, I really loved her art, like or their art. <laughs> yeah. Um. I know. I think. I think they go by both right now. I'm not entirely for sure. Um. I think they do. Yeah. 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 Um. But uh. Yeah. There. I love their art as a kid, especially the show. Like I actually, mm -hmm. of course, the show was more of my thing before I like got on the internet and saw like all the work online and stuff um but yeah i i started really like getting into like more of the career choice and 
the style of Stephen Rivers at the same time. Um, and yeah, Rebecca's work, like a lot of uh, their early work, like their film online uh, singles and um, their, it was like a few comics that they made of like, um, what is it? Uh, Pug Davis. Uh, that one's mm. really good. Okay. Um, I really love that one. Yeah, it's a, it's like a graphic novel that they made like long before pitching Steve Universe and working on Adventure Time, I think. Um, that and uh, their, uh, some of their other comics about like being in relationships and uh, like the, the two brothers, I forgot what that comic was called, where one of them was like in the hospital bed and um, they were getting along with like Simpsons quotes. I don't remember exactly what the name of that one was. But yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the other work really touched me and I grabbed a lot of my style from their work, like how loose and like kind of um like really free handy it is. Mm -hmm. Like I still I still really use a lot of my line work um, or do a lot of my line work like based on how they do it. So yeah, that I think that's where that started. Yeah, Rebecca Sugar for sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. Now um yeah. Was there a certain medium that grabbed your attention more when it comes when it came to the art um, creation? Like, was it more of like of a show or a movie that just grabbed your attention more, or maybe a certain like influential Jack Kirby style art uh, drawing that maybe co really caught your attention? Um, I want to say honestly, Disney movies, like just the animation themselves. Okay. Um, on them themselves really grabbed me. Like I really wanted to learn how to animate and really make things move in that style. Um, and uh, I would say, let's see, what was the what was the first part of the question? Sorry. <laughs> which which yeah, medium? No, you're good. You're good. Medium. You're good. That's what it was. Medium. Uh, I honestly a lot of ink, like uh, mm. pencil and ink and a sketchbook. I wasn't really into like painting or watercolor. I just like lines a lot. Um. So yeah, I, I use a lot of um, gel pens, like the just the cheap ones you get at a uh, visit Staples or right, yeah, um, yeah, Walmart, whatever. Like I, I wasn't, I did try a few more expensive art supplies, but um, just basic ink is like was my way to go. Like so, I usually drew stuff. Like I, I would, I would be in high school with like pens and pencils and drawing on the side of like my math notebook. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. Um, Definitely ink and, and pencil. And then eventually I moved to digital, uh, like Photoshop okay. and all that. Um, so I, I, I kind of view both equally. Uh, yeah, I, I love both a lot. <laughs> nice. All right. <laughs> now, you, you went to school for animation. Uh, you went there for four years. What was kind of the one aspect of it you weren't really prepared for, but embraced the challenge for it? So for my school specifically, um, I would say, I think this is honestly, um, maybe it's a, a general art school thing. It might be, I don't know, at least for the time that I went. Um, actually, TVA styles weren't very uh, liked by my professors in school. Um, mm -hmm. So that was interesting to deal with. Like, I, I really love drawing in like a feature movie style like Pixar or Disney or Dream you know but at the time I really wanted to go into tv and um so my professors would kind of like really downplay and kind of push everyone away from like tv styles um and so that was really a really interesting time for me like I I was really getting good at like this feature style but when I was getting out of school um it was like well TV is probably what I'm going to get hired in first because it's actually really, really hard to get into feature. Um, you have to be like super good. Like it, right. it takes years of practice. Yeah. With TV, um, it, there's a little more, I guess, leeway. I, it feels like um, just, um, and I wasn't really, I was prepared for like a, for like, I was more prepared for like the feature kind of world than I was the TV world, which was, which was like this big thing, like, um, I had to learn how to draw TV after school, like, um, and st and really learn how to storyboard after after I graduated. Like, re like really, the big thing was like I learned all these skills in school, but mm -hmm. my actual portfolio I had to work on after I graduated. Like, and I think that goes for a lot of people who go to art school. Like, they learn a lot in school, 
but it's really their personal work that is going to get them like a job. Okay. So a lot of, um, a lot of your schoolwork is going to end up just kind of being like, like on like part of your path, I guess, to making that portfolio, but you won't really be super prepped for the industry after you're done with school. Like that's, that's what it felt like for me, at least at the time. I'm not entirely sure if it's like that now. It might've changed a little bit, but it still feels that way where you're not entirely prepped. Um, so yeah, that's the big thing. You go to, you basically you go to school for four years and then after that, you're still working on getting the job. <laughs> like, I didn't know that that was going to be a thing. Like I thought, I thought I would be, you know, get a job like right out of school, you know? Right. Um, but uh, yeah. And then the pandemic happened and all, all that, all that crazy stuff. Like that wasn't really something I was expecting. So um, yeah, that was like a big challenge, just the style stuff and trying to figure out like, um, you know, like uh, what, what way I want to go like after mm -hmm. school, like that, that kind of thing. So yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Now for storyboarding, did you go uh, to school for storyboarding or were you entering in for a different part of uh, art and animation? And was that something you develop and got uh, attached to later on? Yeah. So I always wanted to do storyboarding. Um, I went to school specifically for animation. Usually when you go to art school, you have a, you just go for animation and then mm -hmm. I guess you'll focus on one specific part of animation, but your major is animation. Right. Um, so with my school, we actually only have like a, like one mandatory storyboarding class and then like four mandatory animation classes. So I, I learned how to make with paper and pencil really well, but storyboarding was like, it was just one class. So I could, I didn't really have a lot of time to like, uh, learn like in a classroom setting and like have those assignments and like have to do them. I had to like make the time right. for to learn storyboarding. Um, and uh, yeah, like uh, I, it was mostly animation during, when I was in school. I kind of mostly learned how to storyboard like after school. So that was, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> okay. And animation, animation does, sorry, animation does help me like it informs my storyboarding, but like, like the actual like, nitty-gritty of storyboarding I had to learn like after school yeah okay so was it kind of like a hobby at first but then the more you were doing it the more repetition you got uh you were doing it, it just became more of a passion for you yeah um I feel like it's a little I think it was a little bit of both because I wasn't I wasn't sure of exactly if I wanted to do animation or storyboarding um I mean I kind of was always set on wanting to do both but I felt like I had to stick to one like the rest of my life or something like that, which actually isn't true. You can do multiple paths like throughout your lifetime as an right. artist. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it, I think it really uh, started as like, a, I want to do this and I'm doing this for fun. And then it really, yeah, it really did become more of like, Oh, I really want this to be, to be my job kind of thing. Um, and it was a little frustrating during school that I didn't have a, I didn't have a lot of assignments on server running. They were more on animation. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, eventually the animation did eventually help me. So it's kind of like this, this clash of like, oh, there's pros and cons to what I learned. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely server running is like my, my main thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it definitely is. I see a lot of your work on, like on Instagram. To, uh, you post on Twitter. You have your own YouTube channel as well. They're yeah. so good. They're so good. So the Thank flow you. of it is just amazing. It's like, wow. Okay, I, I see you. All right. And um, being <laughs> being that you do so much on your on your own time, making so much of your own original characters. How important is it to make sure you have um, some kind of your your own me time to take breaks in between those um projects that you're doing, whether whether it's being for a studio or doing freelancing for yourself. And now that all that work consume you. Yeah. So I, um, usually I treat my personal projects as like me time actually. Um, mm -hmm. but it's still like an active form of me time, like going to the gym, you know, like, okay. like when you go to the gym, uh, you can go a lot like it's good to go a lot but you can't go too much because then your muscles are gonna fucking wear down i'm sorry am i allowed to curse on this <laughs> yeah hell yeah go ahead okay <laughs> yeah, if you want to curse like a sailor, uh, please 
go right ahead. The okay. floor is yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just making sure. Um, no restrictions here. Like, if you do it, if you work out too much without breaks, your muscles are going to break down. Yep. And it's, and you're, you're literally damaging your body. It's, it's the same thing with art. You do art too much. You are literally going to break down physically and mentally. So I do take breaks pretty often. I do try to draw every day, but there's definitely some days where I'm like, uh, I don't feel like drawing today. And then I, I definitely like try to take that into, into heart. Like, like, okay, this is a break day. I don't feel like drawing. I'm not going to draw. I'm not going to force myself to draw. Like, um, just going to take the break, let my mind, uh, you know, uh, take a break. And, you know, also my wrists, like, that's a big thing. Um, big, big, uh, thing that artists should know is to always stretch your, your, uh, <laughs> wrists and your hands and your shoulders, your back every single day, do it every single day or else you're going to get injured. Like, please. And you should also <laughs> build muscle on your wrists because if you don't, then you're going to end up working and you're going to get like tendonitis or carpal tunnel or something. And it's just like, no, like, please don't do that to yourself. Like, please like take care of yourself before you get into this because like the way that things are right now, it's just, it's just a lot of work and you'll, you'll break your body down. Like, um, so yeah, definitely important to take breaks. Like I'm always taking breaks. Um, I haven't gotten a big injury yet because I learned really early on that you should take breaks and stretch and all that stuff. Like, I, like I've been stretching since I was like 16. A okay. lot of people I feel like learn, um, learn to do that after they've injured themselves, which is, you know, that sucks. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely like, uh, encourage people to take those breaks and take care of your body. Like, like way before anything bad happens, like you could prevent it. it it's totally preventable. You just gotta exercise and let yourself rest and not just not just draw like all freaking day you know um so yeah very important take breaks <laughs> <laughs> very very much so yeah um we i've as i was re researching you i've seen you work for a studio called wild brain um what has that been like working for a studio like that and how much of your work has been involved in most of the shows that, that you've been involved in uh-huh um so there is a lot of NDA involved. Uh, let me mm. see what I can talk about. Uh, let me see. Uh, I think I can say that I got to work on Polly Pocket. It's on Netflix. Okay. Um, that was really cool. Like just getting into uh, the first, like my first uh, real, I guess, studio job. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, it is a bit different because it wasn't union. So the, uh, compared to like union prices in America, um, Wild Brain is in Canada. So it's not okay. unionized with the, you know, uh, with the, the state side and all the, that. the anime. Yeah. The animation guild and all that stuff. Um, so, uh, there was a, a, a little more crunch than I'd say than, than it would be here in the States. And the payment was also a little bit lower. So that was, that was like interesting to, to, um, I guess, uh, learn, um, because uh since I already knew that I already knew the pricing here and uh and like how the workflow is here um it was just kind of like a different thing over there you know um but right. you know I got I got a you know it, it was a a little expected like I knew like in other countries like things are a lot different because there's a lack of union or you know they just do things differently blah 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 um but yeah I had a I like the characters on Polly Pocket like it's a cute show um it's not like uh what is it you know like a a a, an, a, a big gravity falls show or anything like that <laughs> is what i'm saying like <laughs> but it's still True. cute it's for kids it's for right. it's for young kids it's a, it's a cute show um you know if you have like some really if you have young kids that really like like strong girl characters then uh i would i would show that show All right. um, but yeah it was uh it was fun boarding for that show i'd say okay and did you did you have to put any feelers out for them to get a, for them to reach out to you or did they, uh, w what was kind of like the situation for them? Oh, oh, okay. So I actually, um, I applied on their portal. Okay. Uh, sometime like a few months before they reached out to me and were like, Hey, we saw you applied and we think we want you to work with us. Um, and I was like, yo, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I it's really interesting because usually these days, um, 
the portal applications um don't uh don't it feels like they don't work as well as like uh just straight cold emailing a recruiter or um uh what is it uh having someone find you like on on twitter or something you know um right, i yeah. think the portal yeah the portal applications are just kind of there as like a i think it is a legal thing <laughs> <laughs> um and uh so yeah, you can apply. They do. They do see like every everyone's applications, but but for some reason, it's just there's so many. I think that like it's hard for uh, it's hard for people to to really get the job. Like like it's only the really really good people that get the job, or or the people on the team for the show that the application is for. They will like find someone that they really like and then get them on board and then. Um, the portal application kind of becomes uh just uh like i said a legal thing like it's just, it's just there for for anyone to apply to but really they they're probably finding someone finding people specifically that they really want um so yeah that was interesting i applied through the portal um actually got the job which which was surprising <laughs> <laughs> um and uh yeah that's how i got on board with wild brain um they they liked me i interviewed um and uh they they thought my work was cute and uh they were like okay well yeah we'll have you on nice are you still working with them and you have any other future projects coming up down the streamline or it's kind um, of um i got to i got to work with them for a couple months um i do uh i i could work with them again we'll see um okay. i do i do know that on other shows they might need people but it's still like i think it was like a one-time thing where they were hiring people in the states because there's mm. a lot of like uh weird stuff with being in another country and working with them right um and i don't know how often they do that so we'll see if something opens up then like yeah sure but i i don't know like when or if they'll be able to kind of thing okay now sticking on the um on the industry still i just want to get your opinion on it because it was such a hot topic uh last week the use yeah. of ai technology use in the marvel secret invasion opening credits the creators came out yeah. and said they use they use AI technology, but people were still involved in making it, but still didn't really sit well with a lot of um, artists in the industry, feeling like they took jobs away from certain people that could have bordered those opening credits. You, they could have done yeah. something with them. And you being an artist yourself, I just want to get your quick thoughts on that. Does that feel like is, is that taking away something from you as an artist? And is that just opening the door for other studios to say, oh? Hey, we could just go to AI they, and they can make whatever yeah. they want. Yeah, I am not a fan of AI. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, AI is uh, really, God, I just, I just don't, I don't like AI. <laughs> I like AI in the sense that if you made a machine that, like, picked up all the recycling on a beach or something like that like that would be super fucking cool like actually helping the world and like if 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 you want ai to take people's jobs then give give us like you know required monthly income or something from the government if, if you want ai to be a thing you know right um but with ai in the arts it's like well art is like it's it's not just like it's 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 how do i describe this it's not really a survival based thing it's more of a it's luxury but it's also just part of what makes us human so making robots do it is just like like what is the point like point of us making art is so we can like express ourselves and um uh make what's like inside of us you know and really uh like I said, it, it makes us human. And with I feel like with these or with the with the project that you mentioned, it's just like you're taking jobs away from people for no reason other than to make things cheaper for yourself, which is like not really super necessary because you're already like rich as fuck. <laughs> like what's the <laughs> point? Like why? I don't understand. Like it's just it makes me it makes me mad. Like I'm smiling, but like I'm actually like <laughs> hey, hey, let it out let let your feelings out let them let them hear you let's um, hear you come on <laughs> tell me so how you really I feel usually, 
So for me, for AI, it's just like, especially with illustration. And I feel like for the, for the VFX on this project, it was like, well, on one hand, I'm like, okay, well, they were going for something that feels artificial. So doing AI feels like, yeah, you, that's the kind of art you're going for specifically for this. But at the same time, it's like, well, you could have just gotten a bunch of artists to make that, make that feeling anyways and pay them. Mm -hmm. And you're not spreading the weird, um, like you said, the opening up the door to, to other studios using AI and making it a popular thing. Like you could just not do that and make it easier for us. Like, right. you know, and uh, yeah, but AI to me is just, it's, it's not really art to me. Like you're stealing stuff from other artists and you're Frankensteining them together to make something new, but it's not really new because it's like, um, it like it's it's just taking parts of an image and putting them together like none of it's new it's just like i said frankenstein and you know when you have an artist making this stuff uh, even if an artist is going to mimic like a photo or maybe take inspiration from another artist it's still it's still literally a new line like whatever they're making is a new line when, with ai it's not a new line it's like a bunch of little pieces of an existing line several existing lines actually um so it's it's theft. I mean, it's not. It's just it's not good. I, I'm not. I'm not a fan. And with like I said, with this VFX project, uh, I yeah, I would have rather they had hired some people. Like I get what they were going for, but they really should have just hired um, artists to make it and just make it better for everyone, not spread the whole AI thing becoming popular among studios. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. I I totally agree. And I, I've heard both arguments from both sides. I get what Marvel yeah. was trying to do. It's the show about the scrolls. I'm not sure if you're aware about those characters in the comics. Um, they yeah, take. I've heard of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They take over whoever they're trying to take over the faces and they're not really real. And it's a whole big blah, 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 blah that we don't need to get into. Yeah. But yeah, I just want to get your quick thoughts on it. <laughs> you being uh, an artist in the game and the industry today. Um, Pivoting away from that real quick, how has some of today's animation from movies and shows helped you inspire some of you some of your recent work? Because I'm looking on your Instagram, looking on your again your Twitter, all your work from <laughs> Spider Man, from the Owl House, Amphibia, Steven yeah. Universe. They're just they're just so freaking good. Like how how do they help Thanks. you? Oh, absolutely. How do they help you inspire your uh, your original characters that you make? Um, so I actually, uh, take a lot of inspiration from, um, not just the style, but the storytelling. Um, what a lot of these shows, uh, do is, you know, um, at least for the 2010s, I think things are going to start changing now that we're in the 2020s. Um, like with Owl House, Amphibia, and Steve Universe, they, I think all three of those creators have mentioned that they, they pitched the show. But they pitched it as like an episodic cartoon that didn't include the serial life part of it, like the big story. Yeah. And um, so the way that I, I, the way that I go about my original characters is like, okay, well, if I wanted to make a show someday, how would I work this out to make it palatable? Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, make it, uh, make it appealing, I guess, to uh, like other executives. Right. So it's not just the shows themselves, but also the creators and what they have to say. Like, I really pull from, like, uh, the way that these creators um, have gone about their process. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a lot of the times they'll um, they'll have, like, an outline for the story or, like, what these characters are going to go through throughout the seasons. And then they have a team to kind of pull it all together. So they don't figure out all the nitty gritty at once. They, they, they make a, a base and then... Um, they make their crew and then they fill in the gaps kind of thing. Um, and that's kind of what I want to do with my stories. Like that's, that's the biggest thing that I've pulled from, from all three of those creators. Um, the other thing is style, um, you know, just making it, making it look like it's a show for kids. I feel like, like stylistically, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of deeper themes and like yeah. um, a lot of uh, exploring my diverse topics and like, you know, mental health or abuse, et cetera. Um, like, I love that a lot, making something look really cute, but it has, like, a, like, a really more deep meaning to it. Um, let me see, uh, I'm just gonna say something else I don't remember right now. 
damn ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, God, I don't remember. It's okay. I think that, we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll jump back into that. And, yeah. spe- and speaking on those shows like the Owl House and um, Amphibia Steven Universe, how is that? How has it been so far getting the reaction from those fan bases uh, to your work? Because you do a lot of you do a lot of great um, storyboards for their shows, uh, some yeah. alternate universes and everything like that. And they really attached um, attached themselves to you and your work. How is it? How is that like trying to just gain that attention from them and all the love as well? I think it's really cool, honestly, that people really like my work. Like, I'm just being, <laughs> honestly, look at my whole, the way that I draw and, like, post artwork is just, like, I'm just being really self-indulgent. <laughs> and it's really cool that people actually like all the, quote-unquote, like, cringe stuff that I draw. Like, I'm cringe, but I'm free. Like, like it's kind of how I feel about things. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really cool. Sometimes you get those, like, those really shitty people that are like me, or they don't like what you're drawing, or they're homophobic, or whatever um or they or they just hate the show and hate people that draw fan art like sometimes they'll get that kind of thing um but overall like fandom has been like a fun experience for me like I I think uh especially now like just pulling back and kind of being in my own circle and not really interacting uh I guess so um with with like really controversial opinions I guess has made things a lot easier like like I'll uh I, I just keep those on, on discord or between friends like it just it just makes it makes life a lot easier without like thousands of eyes on you and like judging you for your opinion um like it's yeah so far it's it's been nice like I there has been a few times where I'm like oh my god this is so annoying while people why are people talking about this I need to mute all these words now like <laughs> But, um, yeah, I do really enjoy, like, you know, interacting with people's comments and, like, uh, you know, even even other artists or, like, other people's ideas. Like, I'll, I'll comment on other people's work and, like, be like, oh, my God, I really love this thing. Um, so, yeah, it's it's fun. Definitely fun nowadays now that I've, like, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, uh, pulled away a lot more and I'm not just, like, like, like right. completely, like, on everything in the fandom kind of thing. And- is like, that- I just kind of keep things simple. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, you're, you're good, you're good. And now with um, most of the shows ending, is it a little more easier not to be sucked into those shows um, when um, when you're making art for them like that and not to be also adherent to the fan base? Because sometimes when you do certain things for fan bases and you do them so good, like you have, you do them amazing. They're incredible. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> of course. Um, and they expect they... It's that weird. It's that weird thing that us fans have. We want more. Give us more. Give us more. Is it hard to say no to them and not do more for them, or is it just you know, let me try something else? Like you, like recently, you've done the Elemental work. Which, by the yeah. way, if you haven't seen Elemental, go see that movie. It is fan freaking tastic. It's so good. It is so oh, good. I and I gotta they, see it again. <laughs> they promoted that movie so wrong. When I went to see it the first time, I had no idea this is going to be a great immigrant story. That was like, such that was such a horribly promoted movie. Yeah, it was it was terribly like the advertising and the trailers were just like, oh my mm-hmm. god. But um yeah, so I'd say uh yeah, now that these shows are over, like I'd say for me it's actually not really a a feeding into the fan base kind of thing. For me, it's actually um uh, you know, these episodes would come out, come out weekly mm-hmm. and I would get so many ideas for the episode, like, <laughs> like, and I, I swear my, my, I could not keep up with my brain, like, and it would be really stressful. <laughs> um, so actually I'm like drawing as much as I can because I'm trying to keep up with myself. Like, does that mm-hmm. make sense? <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I remember, I think at some point, uh, when I was on Tumblr in like 2014, 2013, um, maybe, no, this was 2016. I was in college. Um, when Steven Universe had like its summer of Steven event going on, Mm -hmm. I like, I was drawing for that like every day and I was having a lot of fun, but there was also this kind of feeling of like, I need to post to get the likes. Like that was a big thing. 
So I guess it does, there's a little bit of that, like, oh, I need to, I need to post more for the fans, but it's more like because I wanted those likes, which can be really, really toxic for you. I still actually deal with that today. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, I need to draw because I need to post and get those damn likes. Right. And oh my God, it's so annoying when you, when you get sucked into that, like it's, it's really, it's like poison. Like it's not good for your brain. It's like a drug. Like it's so bad. Um, I've pulled in and out of, of that mindset like several times. And right now I'm like out of it, which is like really nice. But when you're in it, it really sucks. Like you really, you're stressed and tense and you can't really think about other things. And it's just like not, uh, not good, not good to be in. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, like, especially these days, it's just like, I get so many ideas that I, I don't want to draw them all as like, as I guess not as I want to be quick, but also efficient and make them look good. Right. But there's just so many and I get excited about all of them. And I'm like, which one do I do? And like, <laughs> what do I do first? Like, when am I going to get to this one? Like, it's like, it's like that kind of thing. It's like, it's less about the fans and more about myself now, which I guess, it, which I guess is a good thing, but it's still, it's still stressful in its own way. <laughs> I know, that's un completely understandable. I'm just, it's that, again, it's that we're feeding the machine, feeding the beast. Of yeah please give us more, please give us more. But the more you give, how much does it really take out of you? Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, real quick, how has um, kind of the whole fandom of... Sorry, I'm trying to think of the right question here. That's okay. <laughs> I, I, draw, I completely draw on a blank. <laughs> you just brain farted. It's okay. That happens right. to me all the time. It just happened to me during this interview. <laughs> oh, hey. Well, you know what? I just thought, like, how how do you deal with uh, stress kind of when you're trying to do art and create? Do you do, like, kind of, like, step away from the drawing? Do you do, like, go for a walk? What's kind of, like, your process when you're doing uh, projects? Oh, yeah. So, um, oddly enough, uh, sometimes my uh, cashier job can actually <laughs> get me away from art. Yeah. Uh, it's weird because I'm at work and I'm thinking about how much I want to draw, but it's also, like... I'm at work and taking a break from it, like mentally and, and physically, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but to actually distress, uh, I usually will like go for a walk or sit outside. Um, hanging out with friends really helps. I'll take a weekend or a day to hang out with people and just not not draw that day. Like I'll, I'll take that day to um, just to get my uh, social battery filled kind of thing. And yeah, that, so that's super helpful. Yeah, friends and uh, good sleep, which is really important. Um, just any kind of self care, really. Like I include cleaning is self care these days. Like I used to not think of it that way. I used to hate doing chores, but now it's like, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, just doing anything that that you're supposed to be doing to take care of yourself, like self care and hygiene and eating well, sleeping well, drinking water, um, getting outside. You know. Uh, seeing friends and all that stuff um being like financially uh kind of i guess uh stable i guess I, and i've reached that point like that's that's uh it helps me manage my stress um i'm also like uh i have to be on medication for some of my issues mm. um and that helps a lot if you, if you really have really bad like anxiety or, or stress about just everything or whatever um I, I always recommend it. I have a therapist and I, I'm also on medication and that helps like, like it changed my life, like that kind of thing. Um, so that, that's another recommendation besides the, the usual like self-care stuff. Um, yeah, that, that's how I manage it pretty much. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm glad you're getting like the help that you need and that helps yeah. you kind of not stay uh, balanced, but you know, just keeps you even, uh, even key, even level and just make sure you get through every day mm -hmm. in life. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's super helpful. I, I recommend it to anyone who can, who can afford it. If you can't, there are programs out there that can help. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if you can, I, I really recommend it. Even if, even if you feel like you don't need it, like you, it's good to at least try it, you know, maybe yeah. not the medication, but at least therapy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like I've been, in, I've been on, I've been for two years and uh, yeah, super, super, super helpful. Like just getting through stuff. Oh, and the gym, gym is also big. <laughs> That's true. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, with a lot of your original animations and your stories that you that you create, is there any one specifically that means the most to you that pretty much reaches to you to your heart the most that you've created over the years? Like original story? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I feel like this is hard because it's spoilers. <laughs> um, so I do, I have a couple of stories. Um, I guess I'll just give the vague idea of what they're about. Um, so I have, I have one story, uh, the big one that I've been working on for a really long time. Um, it's called the uh, Hello and Tomo. And mm. it's, it's about, it's very much inspired by 2010 cartoons where it's a kid who, um, gets, uh, uh, sucked into a portal and gets transported mm. into a world of of insects that that walk around and talk. Okay, yeah. I, I thought it looked familiar. I was like, oh, where have I seen yeah. that before? Yeah, yeah, that's my big project. Um, the themes are basically a lot about relationships with your parents. Um, like, there's the four main characters. There's um, there's Sleeves, who's the kid. Beatrice is the uh, Hazel is the moth, and then they have their other two friends. Um, named uh, Cobalt and Marvin, who are a beetle and a uh, mantis. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's the big core theme is like uh, uh, relationships with your parents. So Sleeves uh, came from, actually that's spoilers. <laughs> okay, um, I'll, I'll talk about Beatrice and Hazel. Okay, Beatrice, <laughs> Beatrice uh, has a very um, kind of a overworked mindset. Like uh, her mom is the queen bee and uh, she is worked to the bone a lot of the time like she her mom views her as a very on a very high pedestal um okay. and a lot of the time she's usually really stressed or dealing with anxiety etc and, and there's a lot of uh, tension there between the like mother daughter relationship and throughout the throughout the show it's like um like i picture it being like three seasons or so um there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of tension and a lot of, um, there's a lot of fighting between them. There's also this weird amount of respect between them, um, just because, uh, you know, Beatrice, uh, it's, it's her mom. Like, you have this automatic respect for your parents. And so it's like navigating that. With Hazel, um, it, she's actually the daughter of, of um, I want to say it's a, it's a metaphor for like kind of a, for kind of religion. Mm -hmm. Um the dad is actually uh her dad is a uh, what i what i guess would be the equivalent of like a, a pastor so they they worship light because they're moths <laughs> so they have they have like a light god like the moon and stuff like that in the okay. sun um and she uh she deals a lot with uh her beliefs and um being being the daughter of a pastor like that can be a lot um and uh navigating like the kind of the more corrupted beliefs of like their their religion kind of thing like the really mm -hmm. bad ones okay. um like you know like a you know we're talking like sexism and homophobia and racism and that kind of stuff and right. um just kind of yeah navigating that belief system and what her beliefs are and like kind of getting rid of those ideas um so yeah a lot of the show is basically about parental relationships and, and all of those things are stuff that i went through like as a kid um and yeah i'd really love to get get this idea out there someday like i don't know i don't know i'll i might pitch it i might make it an indie <laughs> thing maybe a comic we'll see but i've been working on it for so long i'm like this needs to get out there at some point like i want it out there i think it would be good for people like i'm excited about it um but yeah that's the biggest one that's like closest to me right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm hoping to draw them more but i'm like sucked into fan art again <laughs> so mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> And uh, speak real quick on indie art itself. Um, it's kind of been blowing up recently, mm -hmm. the past few years. Um, one specific show, Hell of a Boss, which they recently put yeah. out. I don't know if you watched the recent season eight, season one, part two finale, which it's when you see something like that, indie, independent art, a show like that, just killing it on YouTube, just killing it pretty much everywhere they go. Does that give you hope? Does that give you some more motivation saying, okay, keep grinding, keep working, because eventually you're going to break through, like you said, pitch your story out, someone's going to listen to you, and you're going to be the next hell of a boss or the next has-been hotel? Yeah, it really does. I feel like I feel like with the uh, hell of a boss specifically, I haven't actually seen – I've only seen, I think, the first couple episodes, mm. and I've seen a bunch of clips – from like all the new ones because you know every time an episode comes out it blows up and all the really good animation and the work that the artists do comes out on twitter and i'll see it and i'm like yo this is really cool um but yeah for sure like i would i would love to 
you know, make a Kickstarter or something someday to make a project that people would really be interested in, in working on. Um, my thing, <laughs> I've said this in the past, this has kind of changed a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I've had a lot of uh, bad experiences with, with indie projects, unfortunately, and it really made me like kind of sour about them for a while. Um, just because like, you know, the the pay wasn't great or mm. uh, just the way that they were managing the project wasn't really efficient or like professional, you know, and it was just like, oh my God, it was just really irritating for some of these projects. Um, so then I took a break um, and it's been, I don't know, it's probably been like six months since I've worked on an indie project just because I have my, my retail job. Um, but yeah, I've since you know the the break has helped me think more about them. Be like, yeah, you know these are these are really cool projects. Like the fact that these are coming out. Like there's some others like like Box Town and Lumi and the Great Big Galaxy and stuff like that. Shout out to those. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> out I think them. they're going to be really cool. Yeah, um, and uh, I think they're going to be really cool. And I'm excited to see more indie projects come out. Just my my big thing is always you know treat your workers right and pay them as well as you can. Like, right. I know you can't meet, I know you can't meet union rates a lot of the time with these projects, but, um, you know, just, just do the best you can. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of the time when you're working on a project with Indie, um, you do have to accept that you're going to be putting a lot of work in and not be paid as much as you could be paid, even if you're really, really good, just because they can't afford it. So, so a lot of it is just, passion all around through all your passion like if you have the time and you have the heart for it then yeah to go for it make it work on it all that stuff um yeah i am i'm very excited for it for any new indie project that's going to be coming up like i think i think this is going to be like a new era of that of that kind of thing nice i'm glad to hear that and glad to get your kind of intake and insight on independent work and the mechanisms and insight and then business hopefully I, like you said, people do get paid the right amount for their work. They get appreciated yeah. for it. Um, if you can say what's what's next for you and your brand, what what um what's kind of the next step for you for yourself, your brand, your work, um, any other future projects? Not working for any studios. What what can you share with us right now? Yeah. So um, right now I'm just uh, you know I have. Uh, my Patreon, my, you know, I have commissions open and all that stuff. I'm just kind of making ends be right now with my art. Um, I do want to get back into working on my portfolio, uh, probably, you know, in a few months. Like right now, I just kind of, kind of uh, stepped away from the industry world just because it's not great right now. Right. But hopefully once it turns around, I'll get back into, into the job hunt and making, making new like professional work. Um because the fan boards are, are great for practice, but what you really want to put into portfolio is like original stuff. So, um, I mean, some fan art's fine, but like you do want to have a little original. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably the next step, just working on another portfolio, um, another portfolio piece. And uh, I've been getting back into feature lately, even though uh, I was on I was on the TV style for a really long time, but mm -hmm. uh, I learned feature in school and now I'm back into it and like I'm loving it again. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna probably make some more some more feature stuff and maybe maybe eventually, you know, I could work on a, a feature project like that would be really cool. But the main thing is still like TV, like that's what I'm shooting for. Right. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I get the job in the next, <laughs> The next year, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, get it. Breaking the union has been the big thing. Like I, like Wild Brain was really cool, but at the same time, it wasn't union. It was in a different mm. state. I mean, a different country. Um, so I just, I just feel about it differently. Like it's, mm. it's different from actually being, like working in the studio, like in the office, and being a part right. of like the union and and you know all of that stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we get the the big dream job soon. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> uh, I I I think it's gonna happen sooner or later for you. I seen your your one Twitter post you posted the other day of all the list of goals you want to hit in your yeah. career. I'm your work and your strive. I'm pretty sure it's going to happen sooner than later, one way or another. It's I hope happen. so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we'll see we'll see i hope so <laughs> hey i i fingers crossed for you i'm i'm rooting for you i hope everything goes well for you uh thank you so much for joining me today cynthia it was amazing yeah. great talk with you um, where yeah, can, um no problem 
where can people find you online if they want to follow you on uh, social media and reach out to not reach out to you, but if they wanted to get commissions from you for uh, original art? Oh, yeah. Uh, so my uh, handle's everywhere. It's just uh, Sin Davila Chase. So C-Y-N-D-A-V-I-L-A Chase. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just my name, but the, but the Cynthia part is like shortened. Um, yeah, everywhere. Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I'm on Tumblr. Uh, what else am I on? Uh, I do have my Kofi. Yeah, I think those are the main ones. I do have a DeviantArt, but that's like that's old. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> and tomato, um, tomato. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, it was very nice. Very nice meeting you and talking to you. It was fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great talking to you. And um, you guys make sure to follow me on my socials on Twitter or TikTok at SamMac55. Instagram at SamMacias5. Facebook at SamMacias55. Make sure you smash that like button. Like, put all the comments in the comment section. Tell us how much you love Cynthia and her work. Make sure you follow her on all that and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, for more interviews, reviews, reactions. I will be doing reactions soon. Hold tight, hold tight to your butts on that. And uh, again, thank you all for joining me. And until next time, bye. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>